I'm Craig Worth, the Director of Communications for the Diocese of Utah. Hi, I'm Kurt Cook. I'm the volunteer historiographer for both the Cathedral Church of St. Mark and the Episcopal Diocese of Utah. And so St. Mark started rather humbly uh, with about uh, four rooms from what I understand, a little white clapboard building downtown. But the important thing was everyone was served. Whether or not that person had money or not, whether or not that person had statue in the community or not. And I think that was the important uh, part of the development 150 years ago. And there were miners and rail workers. That was the economy of the, uh, of the state at that time. And the Episcopal Diocese of Utah at the time saw the need to take care of these folks. And so Bishop Tuttle, Daniel S. Tuttle, was to create a hospital, St. Mark's Hospital, and not just something that would have a country doctor come in with a little carpet bag full of uh, goodies, but to find a real physician. And then Dr. Hamilton arrived, an extinguished, uh, a distinguished surgeon, a distinguished um, practitioner. And I see, even as you go up into the point of when the hospital was built, on 39 South, it was again to serve a part of the community that uh, really wasn't served and that was those living way away. 39 South was about as far as you could get from downtown. And so I think that was the uh, foundation I see of the hospital. The Episcopal Church has always been noted for trying to improve its community wherever it is. So when the first Episcopalians priests anyway, got here in 1867, they started a school, which is now Roland Hall St. Mark's. And But the very next thing, in conjunction with Dr. Hamilton, like Craig talked about, is providing health care. In four years, they had seen the need, you know, their beds were totally full. I mean, they had six beds to start with. So they opened up a new facility with 12 at 5th East and 3rd South, a block away. Um, that lasted till 18, the early 1890s when they realized they needed to do something much, much better. So they started a funding campaign, and the early missionary bishops, uh, Tuttle and Leonard, were quite good at, you know, talking people into donating funds. And then they were able to start the hospital out on Beck Street, Third West. So yeah, the ever-increasing need. So the hospital opened, I think, for business, the last third one in 1893, and in six years, they realized they needed a whole other wing because of the need to the communities. Uh, that were here, and the LDS folks really were very cooperative too. They, they saw the benefit of having something like this. And the other thing that I think that St. Mark's did in, from early on that was important is that uh, established what became the St. Mark's Nursing School. And that's important because up to that point, so many of the what we called nurses perhaps were just helpers. They were not skilled necessarily in the finer points of medicine. And St. Mark's wanted them to be part of the team, to be really qualified. And so the St. Mark's School started as one of the first attempts, one of the pioneer attempts in the West to really train nurses as very important parts of the medical team. Even though the hospital's being remodeled, you still come in the door and there is Bishop Tuttle, there is the cornerstone, there are the statements of values from early Episcopal bishops when this was a faith-owned hospital, but the sheer fact that this hospital has maintained that history in pictures, in value statements. There's a plaque of those who were part of the staff who served in World War I, there's the heritage, and you see that as you walk down those halls, and I think that's very important. And I commend the hospital for keeping those, and not only just keeping them, but making them the first thing you see when you come in these doors. So it's really about the lives. It's really about the lives of the people who came before me and everybody else, and what they did with those lives that still goes on today. The hospital's a great example of that. It's just. I'm the benefactor, and we all are, of what these people 150 years ago put together. And 
you know, did they envision what it is today? I doubt it, you know, because man, I have a hard time knowing what's coming in a week. But uh, they knew they were doing the right thing, and the right thing kept snowballing. But I think we see so many similarities between then and today. Of course, the hospital here is fantastic and getting better, but that was also the attitude back 150 years ago. The hospital was fantastic and getting better, but in this case, I think we see the history that it reflects that same value, those same principles, and therefore 150 years really isn't that long ago.